My dad had already passed and my only brother had already passed. Now my mother was gone and it was like there was a finality that I was never going to get. Well, let me just start out with a question. Irregardless of what has happened to you up until this day, what are you planning to do with the rest of your life? What are you gonna do with the rest of your life? Are you gonna keep mourning over everything that didn't work out good back here? Or are you going to move on from that Realize that all of that is now something you can't do anything about, you can't change. Are you gonna make a decision today and possibly every day we have to make this decision to let go of all those things and press on to the things that are ahead? You know, I think that some people, and maybe more than we realize, although they function in society, they have jobs, they go to church, they smile at people, they say they're okay, they're existing, not even living, but they're existing with like a low-level grief in their life over disappointments that they've had and things that did not work out the way that they hoped that they would work out. You know, I think sometimes we can get so used to something that we just put up with it instead of confronting it, dealing with it, getting well, and going on. I'm going to show you a couple of scriptures today, interesting scriptures, one about Isaac and one about David, where it actually says that they refused to be comforted. And I think sometimes that's the case with us too. Our, our pain from the past can almost become our identity. That's now who we are. We're this broken, painful person that had all these things happen to us. We've had all these disappointments, and it, it really can become a dangerous type of new modern disease. And we need to realize that Jesus can heal us everywhere we hurt. And every day is a brand new day. Loss is nothing other than a place to start over. Did you hear me? You may not ever be able to go back and have what you once had, but who's saying that what you're gonna have in the future can't be better? Amen? I'm gonna say that again. Maybe you can't go back and undo the wrong you did. Maybe you can't go back and repair the relationship that was ruined. Maybe you can't go back and undo something that happened back here that hurt you. You can't go back and get people to treat you the way that you would have liked to have been treated. You can't go back and get your parents to love you. My mom died about three weeks ago and it was kind of interesting for me how I reacted. Because of the abuse in my childhood, and my mother not dealing with it properly, I never had a, a healthy, right relationship with her. I took care of her, and I was good to her, as good as I could be, but there was just no right rapport between us. And so I didn't maybe have some of the feelings that somebody might have had had they had a really great relationship with their mom when she died, but I found myself having some very interesting reactions a couple of weeks after it, and I'll talk a little bit more about it later, but one of the things I experienced was anger, and I'm thinking, why am I angry? You know, I, I didn't even know that it was regarding her. I just thought, man, I'm in a bad mood, or, you know, I got on the wrong side of the bed because I was kind of taking it out on everybody else. Do you know when you have anger stuck in you, from something that you've been deprived of in your past. If anger's in you, it's gonna come out of you somewhere, some way, somehow. Somebody else is gonna pay the price for something you didn't have back there. So these things can't be stuffed. Don't stuff your stuff. Amen? We're gonna deal with some things. Tonight, I don't usually like to do this because I don't like to say what I'm gonna preach on because people think, oh, I don't need that. I'm going to let the cat out of the bag. Tonight, I'm going to teach on how to stop running from your problems. I tell you, we are experts at running away. Do you know that even procrastinating is running away? 
So go get every troubled person you know. Bring them back here tonight. Tell them you're going to take them to the best party in Birmingham tonight. Amen. I always say, take them out to dinner before you come. Christians will go anywhere if you feed them. I mean, they'll, they'll put up with anything if you'll feed them a good meal. And so, uh, I lost my mother, and it was, it was interesting because one of the reasons I had the reaction that I had was because even though my dad had already passed and my only brother had already passed, now my mother was gone, and it was like there was a finality that I was never going to get from those family relationships what any normal person should have. And so there was a grieving that I experienced, but I have enough experience with God to know not to let a spirit of grief get on me or to get bitter about something that I missed in life because even though I missed something back there and even though you may have missed a lot back there, somebody mistreated you, somebody hurt you, somebody didn't give you what you should have had, you worked hard at a job for a long time, you got passed over for, for promotions time after time, then you got laid off and it's just not fair and part of you is screaming out, it's just not right. Well, it's natural to have an anger when you're mistreated, but you can't try to take it into your future. No matter what I lost back there, I can have a wonderful tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day, but it's up to me and it's up to you about what kind of attitude I'm going to have. Don't let the devil dictate your attitude to you. Amen? Don't let the enemy form your attitude. Learn how to form your attitude from God. The God of all comfort is here with us this weekend, and we're going to learn how to get divine transfusions of comfort. You know, if you were anemic, you could go to the hospital and get some kind of a transfusion. I like to watch these emergency room shows and, you know, boy, if somebody comes in and this is not right or that's not right, one of the first things they call for is blood and they get a transfusion. Well, you know what? We can get a transfusion from the blood of the cross this morning. We, can, we don't have to be anemic Christians. We don't have to be weak people who go around with all of our vital Christian signs off. We can check into the hospital of the Holy Ghost this morning and say, I need a divine transfusion of comfort. I need a divine transfusion of your presence. And all it takes is just a willingness to believe that God is here, that he's not only with you, but he's in you, and that he's there to help you and that you don't have to live your life crippled and lame and just worn out and weary and bitter and resentful. You can't change things on your own, but you can go and get a divine transfusion in the presence of God, and He can make your future so bright that you would need sunglasses to even look at it. Amen? You should just soak up the worship this weekend. That is a great place for a divine transfusion. Just being in a room full of Christians is like a divine transfusion. I don't know about you, but it feels so much better to me in here than it does out in the world. I love just hanging out in these meetings. I mean, my goodness, I wouldn't miss going to church if I were you just to have the opportunity to just hang. Just, whew. It's a great atmosphere. Just anointing come. Come on me. You know, every person that you're sitting around has got an anointing of the Holy Ghost in them. They all have different gifts. Just appreciate what we've got in this room today. Where two or three are gathered together, there I am in the midst of them. This is not just the, I don't know, what, what sport do they play here? Anything? Is this a sports arena? Something? I don't know. Anyway. Hey, it's not just a normal arena today. This is the house of God. Amen. What are you going to do with the rest of your life? You know, forward is the only gear that God has. There's no reverse on God's gear shift. There is no stop and do nothing the rest of your life on God's gear shift. There's only forward. Let's look at Luke chapter 9, beginning in verse 52. And he said to another one, 
Become my disciple, side with my party, and accompany me. But he replied, Lord, permit me first to go and bury and await the death of my father. But Jesus said, allow the dead to bury their own dead. Now, when I'm reading this, I'm not talking about lost loved ones, so don't take it in an offensive way. But the point that Jesus is trying to make here is we need to stop spending all our time on things that really have no life in them for us that we cannot do one thing about anymore and we need to get on with living. Amen? I read a statement recently that I love. Live while you're alive and don't die until you're dead. Come on, live while you're alive and don't die until you're dead. Make a decision today that you are going to enjoy the living daylights out of the rest of your life, and you're going to let God reward you for everything that you've lost, that you are going to have a double good, extra blessed life because of the pain in your past. But Jesus said to him, allow the dead to bury their own dead, but as for you, go and publish abroad throughout all the regions the kingdom of God. Another also said, I will follow you, Lord, and become your disciple and side with your party, but let me first go and say goodbye to those that are at home. It's amazing how, how many people want to follow Jesus after they do something else. Okay, so we're just going to assume that everybody in here is a believer in Jesus Christ, but what are you waiting on to get fully committed? Well, maybe you guys are pretty committed because you're here on Friday morning, but you know what? There's a lot of folks watching by television. You're just like, yeah, I'm going to turn that set on and watch Joyce fulfill my requirements. No. When are you going to get fully committed? You know, I was a Christian for a long time before I was a serious Christian. There's a difference in putting your time in and being radically on fire for Jesus. Jesus said to him, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back to the things behind is fit for the kingdom. Doesn't mean God doesn't love you, but he's saying you're not going to really be any great value to him in kingdom work as long as you're mourning over something you can't do anything about anymore. And you know, I think sometimes, I really believe this, you know, standing up and teaching on grief is not always the cheeriest message, but I believe there can be a grief that's good. We need to feel the pain sometimes of the things that have happened to us, but then we need to move on beyond it. But I really believe that there are a lot of people in the world that are emotionally not right. And I, that doesn't mean you're emotionally ill, but you know, just to be down all the time, that's not the way God wants you to feel. And I do believe that there's a lot of people that have this low-level grief in their life, and they don't even really know what it is. They may be going and getting counseling all the time. They may be going and doing this and that and something else all the time. But sometimes all you need to do is just deal with the things that you're letting ruin your life that are leftover things from yesterday that you don't need to drag into today. Let me ask you, what are you going to do with the rest of your life? It's time to get over it and go on. Good memories are great, but don't be so impressed with even the good things that you have done in the past or that have happened to you, and let them keep you from doing even greater things in the future. Can I tell you what? And this is my habit. The moment the Birmingham conference is over, while I'm on my way home, I will start thinking about the next one in Sacramento. You don't have time to keep messing with things that are behind. No matter how many great conferences we have, and we have had some phenomenal things happen. I mean, I, I've had some blowout crusades in India, things that just are like, oh my gosh, nothing could ever get better than this. But you know what? Everything today is better than something was yesterday because what's yesterday no longer can really minister any life to me other than having a good memory, but today is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to fully live this one, fully enter into this one. I don't know. Maybe it would be the last one I have. Maybe Jesus will come tonight. We'll all go home. 
So let's just, let's just make this day a real barn burner. Let's just make it a great day, amen? You know, in Luke 17, 32, there's an interesting scripture, just three words. I guess next to the two-word verse that says Jesus wept, it's the next shortest verse. And it just simply says, remember Lot's wife. Now, I don't know how much you know about Lot's wife, but she was in uh, Sodom when God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, very wicked cities. And they'd been living in the midst of this wickedness, and God was going to just get rid of everybody, but he said he would save Lot's family. But he gave an interesting order. When you're on your way out, don't look back. She looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. Now, I've been over there, and they showed us a pillar of salt that they say is Lot's wife. I don't know for sure if she is or not, but, <laughs> you know, it's like a, just a huge hunk of rock. And I think a lot of us become like that, just like stuck in place, frozen in motion, not able to go forward because we can't, you know, you can't see where you're going if you're always looking this way. Come on, if you were supposed to look back, you'd have eyes in the back of your head, not the front of your head. We don't have any eyes back there, so that's gone, that's finished, that's done with. God's only gear is straightforward. Amen, this is an exciting day. Exodus 14, 15. The Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. <laughs> so if you're sitting around crying about something all the time, wallowing in self-pity, blaming everybody for your problems, God is saying, why do you cry? Get up and go forward. It's time to shake some things off today and move beyond them. Now, interestingly enough, the Israelites were in a very difficult place. They had the Red Sea in front of them that had not parted yet, and the Egyptian army behind them. That's a good place to sit down in the desert and cry. <laughs> I might have just had myself a good fit if I would have been there with them too. They were in what I talked to you about last night, the middle. Remember that? I said there's a beginning and an end to everything, but there's also a middle. Well, many of you are in the middle of whatever right now. You're coming out of bondage. You're heading toward victory. You've been saved. You know God loves you, but you're still dealing with a lot of spiritual immaturity and things in your soul that need to change, and you're headed toward being a fully mature spiritual Christian that can really be used by God, but you're somewhere in the middle. And I don't know how you feel, but I think sometimes when we're in the middle, we, do, we just kind of feel like, well, I'm not what I used to be, and I'm not what I'm going to be, and frankly, right now, I don't know what I am. All I know is it hurts. Does that make any sense to anybody? You can't go back. You can't go forward. You're stuck out there with your pain, and you got to be very careful that you don't get that attitude of just quitting and giving up and just staying in the same place. You know what I was thinking? I think that sometimes we get like a car stuck in the mud. Have you ever been, do you have enough snow here that you ever get stuck in it? <laughs> not, not so much, okay, doesn't snow in Birmingham? Okay, well, have you ever been stuck in the mud? They, you know, you get stuck in the mud and your, your, your wheels just <laughs> And I think sometimes that's the way we can get in our life. We get so entrenched in things we cannot do anything about. Now listen to me. Stop trying to do something that you can't do and start doing the things that you can do. Did you hear me? Stop trying to do what you cannot do. I can't change people and make them like me. But I can go forward and hope that God will put more favor on my life and put more people in my life that will love me and treat me the way God would want them to treat me. You can't do anything about the one person who deserted you and left you that didn't have enough sense to love you properly. But if you refuse to have a bitter attitude and let a spirit of grief get on you and become bitter and angry, then you can meet somebody else that is going to not only love you but love you double, triple, 
because God can cause that to happen in your life. You know, I was married once before I married Dave Meyer. I was married five years to a guy that mistreated me, ran around with other women, didn't work. I woke up one night and caught him trying to steal my little cheap wedding band off my finger to sell it. And so it was, you know, I'm going to tell you a few of those stories this week and how I got deserted and left in New Mexico. I was deserted and left in California. There was a time in my life when I was homeless. <laughs> but I didn't get stuck back there. Amen. It's not about where I was then. It's about where I am now. And the thing is, is so many people think they're the only one that's got the biggest problem in the whole world. Let me tell you something. There are many, many, many heroes of faith that have overcome things much greater than anything that all of us in this room put together are going through. And they've still got a smile on their face and they've beat that dumb spirit of grief that tries to rule our lives that is from the devil. It is not from God. We're going to get a divine transfusion of comfort. I think somebody's already getting it now. God said, Moses, you tell the people, stop crying and go forward. So Moses was God's mouthpiece. And today, I'm going to say that I'm God's mouthpiece to you. And so here it comes. Stop crying and go forward. Amen. And especially to all the people watching TV around the world, you're hearing this in 70 different languages in all parts of the world. And God's word to you today is stop crying and go forward. Amen. Woo. I feel the bondage is breaking. My goodness. You say, well, I was abused. Somebody hurt me. I was rejected. I got fired and it wasn't fair. Life isn't fair. I made a terrible mistake. I can't get beyond it. I was thinking about Peter this morning. Oh my gosh. What kind of a decision did that apostle have to make to get over denying Christ? At the time when he needed them the most, Peter lied and said, I don't know him. I'm not associated with him. And yet, interestingly enough, when Jesus was resurrected and Mary saw him at the tomb, the angel said, go and tell my disciples and Peter. <laughs> Why did he mention Peter out of all the 12? Why not say, go tell my disciples and John? because Peter was the one that was in danger of losing his apostleship and the call of God on his life through getting stuck with a spirit of grief that he would never get over. God does not want you wasting your life over something that you did or somebody did to you that you cannot do anything about now. It's time to go forward. Amen? Yes. You might have a reason to grieve. Go ahead and do it in a healthy way, but get it over with and don't spend your life with a spirit of grief. It's so important that we learn how to stop remembering what God has forgotten. We know grieving definitely is a process, especially if we're gonna work through it in a healthy way. And it includes allowing yourself to feel the pain that you have rather than trying to avoid it. But we can move beyond it and go through the grace of God into complete victory. It also requires the guidance of the Holy Spirit. It's 6 a.m. and another sweltering day in Prasat, Cambodia. A number of people have already gathered outside the entrance to the Hand of Hope Health Center, some arriving as early as 5 a.m. 
For Dr. Yim and his team of doctors and medical staff, it's a typical weekday for treating some of Cambodia's most impoverished for a multitude of health issues that range from injuries, malnutrition, to diseases. It was for this very purpose that the Hand of Hope Hospital, an on-site pharmacy, opened March of 2009. For Kim Savuth, the Hand of Hope Center was his only hope. After a trek into the mountains to find wood to sell in support of his family, he returned home with symptoms of chills and fever. <laughs> Alarming news for Kim. For him and others in the Prasad area, it's nearly impossible to get medical treatment without the free services of Hand of Hope Health Center. Adverse living conditions are commonplace in the area surrounding Prasat. The Savuth family's level of poverty is so startlingly bleak that they can barely afford the basic necessities to survive. The day we visited Kim, their meal was a rat that Kim's mother cooked on an open fire. <laughs> You know, I don't think that we can underestimate the power of habits in our lives. First, we form habits, and eventually they form us. In my new book, Making Good Habits, Breaking Bad Habits, you'll discover that the freedom from bad habits lies in filling your life with one good habit after another. And with God's help, I believe you can put an end to struggling with bad habits and discover a new level of success in your life. Get my new book today. In dit boek vertelt Joyce hoe het aanleren van goede gewoonten je leven kan verbeteren. Nu ook verkrijgbaar op DVD. En profiteer van de setkorting via onze website joyce-meijer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100.